Hello, and welcome to Festool TV. My name is Jose, and in this video, I want to show you something special. Today, we'll be talking about wooden joints in visible timber constructions. Dovetail joints are often used on secondary beams. The main beam has the corresponding counterpart. I'd like to show you how to produce these connections using the OF2200 router. This is our most powerful router. It is very well suited to this application. We also have a routing template system from Lignatool that we use. In order to produce a milling groove, this cutter has to be mounted. We also need a different base plate. Firstly, I'll put my gloves on. Safety is paramount. There's a green lever here, which we use to easily remove the base plate. Now we've got more space. I'll move that slightly upwards so we can access the clamping sleeve. There is this rocker switch on the 2200 router. We can use this to change the cutter very easily. The cutter first has to be removed. You can hear the ratcheting. We can take out the cutter completely. I don't need that for now. Now the special cutter from Lignatool has to be mounted. It is inserted together with the clamping sleeve and a conical shaft. Now the machine is ready. It's got to be mounted together with the clamping sleeve. Now we need a different open-ended spanner. The cutter is now mounted. We're just missing the base plate. This base plate is required to create a connection between the router and the template. Just mount it. It clicks into place. The whole machine is now ready. The surface is prepared. Firstly, we need the routing template for the tenon. Here's one I prepared earlier. You can find out more about how these are set up from Lignatool. I'll just adjust it and fix it into place. Now we just need the slide unit. It slots in here. This connects the template and the router. The router is then screwed in. The routing depth now has to be set. It's very important here to set the depth very precisely. Otherwise, the joint won't turn out how we want it. How is all this done? Firstly, everything is loosened. I'm pushing the cutter as far as the top edge of the material. I'll lock everything in place. Now, I'm moving this adjuster as far as it goes up to the first position of the turret stop. You'll see why shortly. As I said, I first need to push the adjuster all the way down. This is set to zero. Now the material thickness has to be set on the routing depth. Just pull here. In our case, we want 25 millimeters. 
I'll lock it. Now I'll loosen the main lock, push the cutter inwards and lock it in place. Now I can move this small green lever into this position. Now the tool base is coupled to the routing unit. Even if I loosen the main lock, the cutter remains in this position, as you can see. To set the routing depth exactly, we'll use this template. In our case, we need 25 mm. I'll fit the template. Now we have the opportunity to set the exact depth using the fine adjuster. It's very pleasant to use. The routing depth is set. In principle, we can get started. I still have to fit a few units. I'll put on my protective glasses and ear protection. We're just missing the dust extraction. The routing depth is set in this position. To start routing, the machine still needs to be rotated. This makes it easier to handle. The switch is on this side. Now we can get started. We also need to plug it in. As you can see, we've done the milling groove. We've routed one part. Now we need to route the counterpart. To do that, the router is removed again. Now the routing template is removed. The counterpart is going to be routed on this main beam. We've turned it around. Now we can use the second template here. The template has already been set. I'll fit it in here and it needs to be secured with two screws. I'll use our small TXS screwdriver for that. It does the job perfectly and is easy to fit in any toolbox. 
The template is mounted on this axis marking and fixed in place. Und fixiert. Now I need this slide unit again. It slots in here. The router simply fits on top and is then rotated. Now we can make another plunge cut and fix the depth. Now we can get started. I'll route the right-hand side first to prevent the wood from splintering. Then I'll route from the left-hand side in a clockwise direction. The result is great. Let's see if everything fits together. I'll take the other piece. On the construction site, the beam would simply be slotted in from above. The workpiece would sit upright. The beams would also be horizontal, of course. It would be slotted in here and fixed in place with a knock from above. Inserting a screw at an angle also ensures the joint stays in place. Here you can see a very nice wood-wood joint. It is especially suitable for visible joints. It's a great application. I hope you've seen how to use the router together with the routing template system. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it interesting. I hope you'll tune in again soon. I'm Jose, thanks for watching.